So dare I say, more funny hair. It's all right for now, isn't it? Especially if the key points, which I'm going off on here, like the last few videos, have been on point, stellar, and you're like, wow, he's really intelligent. Or at least he's on something, at the very least. So once again, um, this one is more so on BLM. And what I mean by BLM in terms of the fact being, it really is double standard hypocrisy. And I wanna just say ego. Let's just go with the first two. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know the crime rates in so many cities, communities, with black on black, you know? Like I literally um, watched a video how long ago with a woman in Chicago literally saying the same thing, that there's black on black violence um, pretty much every day in, in their own communities. Or, the, yeah, a lot of black on black crime, like a lot of black on black violence every day in, in, in their own communities, if not every day, quite often depending on which community you live in. But yet you don't see any BLM for that. Nah, you only see it when it's black versus white. Let alone, you only see it when it's a police officer, you know, a pale police officer, you know, shooting or having, um, you know, or using aggressive force um, over a black person. I want people to understand, especially when it comes to my little cocky smile. I have the cocky smile because trust me, if I do not uh, smile um, at my pain, like my personal pain, if I don't smile at my personal pain, I'm gonna cry at my trauma. So I have no other choice but to smile. Because if I don't smile, I'm gonna cry. Because I, I've conditioned myself to just, to just start laughing. I've convinced myself, I, I literally have, it's almost like what an old, you know, I can't even, can't even go back that far, but I could condition myself to just start smiling, just start laughing, you know, because if I don't, I'm going to cry at the trauma, and I don't want to cry, I, I'm to, it really, it really would be uh, teardrops enough to fill up a river, you know, if not a whole lake, and so on, but I want people, people to totally understand uh, where I'm coming 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 from here. It is double standard. It's hypocrisy. It is fineness. I want people to totally understand where are you getting at with these rallies? Especially when it comes to all the kids under 10 that have been shot in Chicago by practically just being out in front of their own house. Just walking outside their own house. Guys, that is hypocrisy. That is a low, 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 low standard. If you're not going to rally for that, if you're not going to do community rallies for that every weekend, or if you're not going to do m marches for that, then what the heck are you marching for? I mean, it's like, I, I don't know what, whatever video I watched, where they was, they was literally saying, who's the true racist? You're only, you're only marching like, like that you're only doing like mob march with 50 or more people um or 100 or more people or however many people you're only doing that when it's you know when it's um <laughs> when you can play the race card on black versus white but not when your own babies less than 10 years old are being killed by gang violence drive-by shootings and some of you know who did it but you're not gonna you know go plead for justice or do whatever you gotta do so did you really love your child or you know some other alternative motive that you could probably come up with there that's what I'm trying to express that when I tell you man it's a lot of hypocrisy in our culture a lot of double standards in our culture and a lot of people that just make me sick in our culture. And I don't mean sick as in sick skills. No, I mean sick to the stomach where I just want to throw up because I cannot believe how they lie, they cheat, they steal, they forge facts, you know. And they'll do anything they can to get their way, even if it's wrong. Bluntly wrong. 
Now, I'm going to say when it comes to the prison reform thing, there's a lot of people in prison who are falsely accused, let alone who are just there for stuff like, you know, marijuana and stuff, you know, so nonviolent offenses. Now, I don't, you know, stand up for, you know, smoking and drinking, or at least smoking, definitely. You know, I don't really stand up for that, but at the same time, a lot of people in jail who I promise you, they don't need to be there. You know, either because, once again, they were falsely accused, or just because they learned their lesson from whatever they did commit, and they're truly ready to be back in the community and contribute to the community and take care of their families, let alone start families. So you have a lot of people in jail who don't need to be there, let alone a lot that do. And I think that that's what you need, like a council of, and I hate to say it as if pastors are just perfect because they're not. You have so many stories about pedophile pastors, pedophile priests, and so many other stuff like that in the news. So I don't really want to try to pretend as if, you know, pastors are holier than now. But I do want people to understand it is time to put together a council for prison reform. And when I say a council, I mean a just council of some of the most, I would say, recognizable faces of honor, justice, integrity, and humility um, in that county, uh, you know, or in that state, you know, you know, you know, state by state, county by county, whichever one. To get some of to get some of to get to get some of these people to to, to dare I say indeed to get some of these people out and I mean in terms of you know to dare I even say to vote of who gets out who gets in or however I finish that sentence because I'm pretty sure I know what I'm saying but I don't know if I worded that right <laughs> but you know some some type of cancel some type of panel to you know help configure it these these uh, cases to see who needs to be in, who needs to be out. And dare I say, yeah, take it to a vote if that's what you need. Need um, like a like a, a jury vote. But that's what it needs to be, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we need. If you were to purchase me, you know, we, we really need that, you know, because a lot of people don't deserve to be in prison. A lot do, but a lot don't. And I would love, I, I mean, I'm, all, I'm a fan of prison reform, but I am definitely more of a fan of curing violence. Because I promise you, the threat of gun violence is something that no child should ever have to go to bed fearing that they're going to get shot for literally no good reason off of a drive-by. And they're just sleeping in the back of their house or even in the front of their house just randomly. And they hear gunshots. The next thing they know, they're paralyzed or they're dead or they're out, you know, they're coughing up blood or whatever the case might be. So my number one social justice cause is gun violence. No child should ever have to go to bed at night with the fear of gun violence on their mind, uh, etc. Um, let alone, it's also the fact being, because well, whether it happens during the day or happens at night, I think you understand the point which I'm trying to make there. Um, but I'm also trying to allude to the fact being, and definitely when it comes to uh, prison reform, I'm all up for it, but we need to do it more organized. You know, we need to do it with a council, um, with a council, you know, to review these cases and take votes on, on you know, dare I say, you know, who, um, uh, yeah, on who gets out and or who stays in. And, you know, and I primarily say that, ladies and gentlemen, because I totally want these people, uh, especially the, the, the people who, uh, especially the uh, people who, um, yeah, I'm watching TV at the same time. You know, especially the the people who, you know, we... Look, I'm, I'm, at least the way I'm, I, I, I'm trying to, you know, express it, man. I really know there's a lot of people out there who they really... They they serve their their their, their time more. Like I said, they got falsely accused, and it, and it just is. It really is just time to, to get them out and see how they constructively... Um, move out the cabin again. Like, you get the point I'm trying to make there. It truly, it truly is time to get some of these people out and see how they constructively contribute back to their community, let alone how they take care of their families when they're out and or start families when they get out. And I'm just saying, you gotta guy first take, take the chance because I do believe there's a lot of people who, if you look at this rioting, uh, rioting and this looting going on, a lot of those people, probably a good 70%, if not more, Oh, 
Those people needed to be in jail a long time ago. Only God knows why they never did end up there. You know, because they're proving to you that they're true colors just without the guns. You know, and so on. And, you know, I want people to totally understand a lot of people in jail, I promise you, you know, they learn their, their lesson and they're ready to get out. But you definitely need a counsel of sorts to help decide all that. So, with that being said, I really don't need to waste anybody's time with more. Your boy, the man, NJ to the city. I, I got more coming soon. I'll come up with the stuff in my sleep. So, take care. Uh, have a blessed and gifted uh, weekend, let alone week with the Lord. And, again, God got you. And, um, yeah, more coming soon. Peace.